Graphing ellipses. There are four big steps to graphing ellipses. Once we know the math of it, which we did in the last video, then you can pretty easily graph it. So the first step is to put it in standard form. The next step is to mark all of the vertices and covertices. Uh, the third step is to mark the center. And the focus points. This is just so that we know where they are. It's not really a necessity to actually graph it, but we like to know as much as we can about whatever we're doing. And the fourth step is to connect the dots. And these would be the vertices and the covertices. So those are the dots you connect, and then it should make an ellipse. In this first example, we want to graph the ellipse. This one's kind of awkward because our a is, or our a squared rather, is nine fourths. If our a squared is nine fourths, then to find our a, we just take a square root. So a equals three halves. So we're going to add or subtract three halves to get our vertices. Um, and then our b, to find our b, our b squared, when there's nothing there, it means it's one. So our b squared is equal to one. So to find b, we take a square root of one, and b is plus or minus one. So once we have those two things, we really don't need the focus points to graph. So let's just graph this one without graphing the focus points. So let's graph the center. The center is 2, negative 1. That's the center point. So 2, negative 1, that's right there. Mark that as my center. And then I'll graph my vertex points. So that would be my a, my 3 over 2. So from there, that's matched up with my y value, so that means it's going to be vertical. So I'm going to go up one and a half. And then I'm going to go down one and a half. So those are my vertex points right there. And my covertex points, my covertices, I'm going to add one. And that's going left and right. Okay, so then if I connect my vertices and covertices, there's my ellipse. It's kind of a small one, but that would be it. And these are your covertices. And your focus points would be in here somewhere, somewhere inside. Okay, when we're graphing this next one, we see that it's already in standard form, so we can go right into it. We should note that our center is the origin, 0, 0, because there are no numbers with the x and the y in parentheses. So I'm just going to go ahead and graph that, 0, 0, that one's easy enough. Now my vertices... My vertices have to deal with the bigger of the two denominators. Okay, so the bigger of the two denominators is 36. So that means a squared equals 36 and a equals 6. So my vertices, changing my y, are going to be 0, 6 and 0, negative 6. So I'm going to go ahead and graph those. 0, 6, 0, negative 6, and those are my vertices. And lastly, we need to graph our covertices. Our covertices are changing my x. 
So that's going to deal with the 9b squared equals 9. And then we take a square root of that. So b equals 3, which means that my x is changing by 3, 3, 0, or negative 3, 0. So if I graph those, 3, 0, and negative 3, 0. All right, and then if we just connect those points right there, and that's your ellipse. And again, if you would want to do your covertices, you would have to find your c. And remember that c squared equals a squared minus b squared. And then find your c, and you would find your c to be equal to 3 square roots of 3, which means we would be in here going up 3 square roots of 3 from the origin. So it would be about right here, probably, and about right here. But that's not important. You don't really need that in order to graph your ellipse. In this last example, we want to do the same thing. Already put in standard form, we just want to graph the ellipse. So we find our center point, which has to do with the 3 and the negative 1. So that would be a negative 3, comma 1 for our center. So that's my center point right there. All right, my covertices. Or, nope, my vertices. Let's do those first. Vertices are corresponding to the biggest denominator, which is in this case is the 4. So a squared equals 4. Take a square root and a equals positive or negative 2. So my vertices are going to be changing my x. So negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1, comma 1. And negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5, comma 1. So if I graph those points, negative 1, 1. There's one of my vertices. Negative 5, 1. There's the other vertice. Okay, the last thing I need to do is graph my covertices. So my covertices are going to be dealing with my other denominator, which in this case is just 1 because there's nothing under the y. So b squared equals 1, take a square root, and b equals 1. So my x term is going to stay the same, and my b term is going to change by a factor of 1. So I'm going to add 1 and subtract 1. So 1 plus 1 is 2. 1 minus 1 is 0. So I have the points negative 3, 2, and the point negative 3, 0 as my covertices. And then just connect the points. Connect the vertices with the covertices. And there's your ellipse. And if you were to take one step further and find your focus points, your focus points would have to deal with your c square or your c. And if you worked it out, your c would equal the square root of 3. So you'd have to add the square root of 3 and subtract the square root of 3 from the negative 3. And that's where you'd get your focus points somewhere in here. Those would be your focus points. And those are your notes over graphing parabolas. Really, once you do the hard part, the math part, the graphing's really pretty self-explanatory. You just graph the points and then connect the dots. Go through the practice problems. Make sure you can actually graph all of those and find all of the important points. And then you should be ready for your quiz over parabolas.